Hello and welcome. This is a video built to support students currently enrolled in the AP Research course, part of the AP Capstone program by the College Board. Hello researchers. This lesson has been uh, created to increase your understanding of the academic rubric expectations through peer review. My name is Emily Lott, a teacher from Chesity High School in Gainesville, Georgia. And my name is Sam Chang, a teacher from Upland High School in Upland, California. We are looking forward to helping support you as you work through the peer revision process. Let's begin with the lesson overview so you know what to expect from this lesson. Our goal for this lesson is, really, is to really help you grasp the expectations of the academic paper rubric through the use of peer review. Remember, the quest process of an AP capstone, uh, AP capstone is recursive. As you review these samples, you may realize you need to revisit different parts of the quest framework, and that's okay. We will be here when you are ready to discuss student uh, with the peer reviews. All right, let's get started with a quick warm up. Where are you in the research process? Feel free to pause the video and think about this question. Perhaps you are midway through the research process and you have some of your uh, written parts completed or maybe you've finished your writing altogether. No matter how much of your academic paper you have completed, this lesson should help guide you through the peer revision process. So let's get started. This lesson has been created to help you engage in the peer reviews for your AP research academic paper. The overall goal is to supply you with the knowledge to help you constructively respond to a classmate's paper and ultimately reflect and improve your own writing. This is our entire rubric for the AP re uh, research academic paper. Emily and I discussed this rubric in depth during the review session entitled, entitled Understanding the Academic Paper Rubric. We've placed this in the current video as a reminder that our rubric for AP research is holistic. This means that even after breaking down the elements and components captured in the rubric, all readers must apply a single score. Feel free to pause the video now and take a few minutes to read through the rubric. We'll be here when you get back. Press pause now. These are the basic behaviors for each of the elements and scores provided on the academic paper rubric. Sam and I discussed these behaviors and how they appear in academic papers in depth during a review session entitled Reviewing Academic Paper Samples. We want to remind you that you should, as your readers will, consider each holistic score per column, as Sam just mentioned. Also, know that while we are using these behaviors as an instructional tool, you should not depend on this chart for your final revisions. The academic paper rubric is ultimately the only rubric that will be applied to your work and is the final word on your score. However, when working with a peer, you may need a common set of behaviors to help unify your revision efforts. The words in this chart could be the language that you can use with your peers to commonly express how you feel they are doing in their drafting process. Feel free to pause the video now to review this slide and revisit the basic behaviors for the academic paper rubric. If you need to review the rubric and basic academic paper behaviors in more depth, please visit the review session entitled Understanding the Academic Paper Rubric. Or if you need to see how to respond to student papers in more depth, please visit the review session entitled Reviewing Academic Paper Samples. We built these two lessons to help you understand the rubric and how the paper will be read. So no worries if you need to watch them first and come back to this lesson later. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to engage in a peer review. So what is a peer review? A peer review is a process designed to help a writer develop their work's validity through feedback from their colleagues. So what is the purpose of a peer review? Before we delve into a peer review's purpose, let's look at, it, at the diagram. You might have learned before that Kairos represents the moment of communication. In, the moment, in that moment, the writer or speaker brings together the audience and the purpose slash subject of their writing within the time, place, and culture of their discipline, otherwise known as the context. This is necessarily difficult. The writer has to reflect about their work and imagine the questions and needs that the audience may have 
so they could preemptively answer and address them in the paper. This is where peer review becomes helpful. An effective peer review allows another person to simulate the audience and help ask the missing questions that the writer may have skipped, insufficiently addressed or not imagined. However, the purpose of a peer review is not only meant to help a classmate reflect about their work by checking and asking questions like the audience would, but also to help you as a writer develop a sense for the rubric and paper from the perspective of your audience. The sense that you develop will help you understand how to hone and improve your own writing and reflection. This slide indicates the basic steps for a peer review. Sam and I recommend that you do the following. First, before jumping into a peer revision, ground yourself in the academic paper rubric and the academic paper behaviors we just shared. By grounding, we mean that you need to be comfortable enough with the rubric to connect your peers' paper to the requests and language of the rubric. Next, you should read through your peers' paper. This reading should be focused and very deliberate. Do not start annotating the paper until you have completed at least one pass or reading of the entire paper. Third, begin to ask yourself questions about your peers' work using the rubric and guiding questions. Sam and I will talk about the questions you could use when moving forward in a peer review. Once you have finished reading and reflecting, begin providing annotations. These annotations should provide focused, specific, usable feedback. Do not confuse your peer by being too wordy or emotionally expressive in your commentary, as your peer may misinterpret or even become offended when you had no intent to do so. Stay objective so that in the digital space, your peer can clearly get what they need to be successful. And finally, consider providing a score to your peer on the academic paper rubric. You must justify the score through evidence from their paper. When you look at the topic of inquiry component, consider the following questions. Inside this element, which is uh, typically at the start of the paper, does the writer state what their topic of inquiry is? Is their topic narrow and have clear boundaries or limitations? Remember that this may occur throughout the paper, so make sure that you have given the paper a fair read through before you begin to address these questions. For the introduction and literature review elements, consider the following questions. Inside this element, which is typically at the start of the paper, does the writer explicitly connect the topic to relevant scholarly works of different perspectives? Does the writer explicitly identify a gap and how their topic will address that gap? And finally, does the writer directly state their research question or project goal? Revisit the conclusions of the writer and compare those conclusions to the original research question or project goal from the introduction and literature review elements and ask this question. Do, uh, does the writer's conclusion or their conclusions answer the research question being asked in this section of the paper? We often find that students do not go back and check their original entries in their intro and their lit review once they have arrived at their conclusions to make sure that there's a clear line of reasoning all the way through. It's your job to help them catch those moments where they obviously need to do a little bit of work. Now that we look through the introduction, let's consider the method, process, and or approach element. This, this, is the part, this part of the paper is crucial, so consider each question as you read this section carefully. Does the writer explain their method logically? Provide, does the writer provide all the necessary information for someone else to replicate their project? Does the writer explain how their method addresses their research question or project goal? Remember, their logical explanation should include references to how they developed or arrived at their method. Next, we have the results, analysis, conclusion, and future directions elements. This section of the rubric is a big one, so let's slow down and go over these questions together. 
you first need to ask yourself, does the writer refer back to their research question or project goal? Remember, we talked about this in the introduction and, and literature review elements. Does the writer have a new understanding? And is it presented clearly? Like, can you actually put your finger on where their new understanding is located in their paper? Do they prove that they have this new understanding logically? So if you were to walk back through the steps in which the writer actually built their new understanding, do you understand every single step that they are providing? Do they then take time to explain that logic so that you can understand it on your terms as much as they have ex expressed it on their terms? Do they connect their research back to the literature review sources? So at this point, after they've reached their new understanding, do they think about those sources that they used to begin with in their literature review and tie them back in to have a deeper conversation about the topic at hand? Then do they reflect about their current research? And do they finally talk about possible future directions or other connections to their research? Now that we've reviewed the results, analysis, conclusions, and future directions element, take some time to look through the entire paper again for the communication component. Slow down and go over these questions together. Does the writer communicate their ideas clearly? Does the writer consistently uh, use a discipline-specific style? Uh, does the writer use visuals uh, such as pictures, tables, or figures? And do the visuals enhance or distract or confuse the reader? Um, do they, does it confuse with other design elements as well? Consider that. Um, does the writer enhance or distract, excuse me, does the writer have errors in grammar, mechanics, and or word choice? How many? I mean, do the errors distract or confuse? Consider that. And finally, we are at the citations component. A little tip before we review these questions, consider revising the citations of a peer who uses the same style guide as your academic paper. For example, if you're using APA, find a peer that is also using APA. This makes this part of the review process easier. So the questions to ask, does the writer cite consistently in a discipline specific style? Does the writer provide attribution consistently in a discipline specific style? And then does the writer have errors in their citations or attributions and how many? So think about this from one of our previous videos about plagiarism. You want to see in-text citations, you want to see written attribution, and you also want to see a thorough reference list. Make sure you check all three of those for your peer before moving on. Now that we've walked through the questions you need to ask your classmate, I'd like to address some common mistakes that occur in peer review, and this is important. Um, the first one, especially, correcting the paper and making decisions for the writer. This is the most important one. Our job as a reviewer uh, is to guide and point out what we see, not to offer corrections. The writer has to make the decision to change their writing based on your conversation with them. It's their responsibility. Um, it's also, also not consistently turning back to the rubric for reference. The rubric is the go-to, all right? The paper is ultimately judged by the rubric, so refer to it often. Another, another mistake or pitfall is being nice by scoring higher than what the rubric says. This does no justice to your classmate. Being nice to preserve good feelings for the moment is ultimately more harmful to the paper's integrity, score, and to the good feelings that come from success later. Also, in the same way as being nice is making excuses for the writer or paper. Our job as a reviewer is to point out what we see, again, pointing out what we see, not make excuses for what's there. Um, that said, being harsh by scoring lower than what the rubric said is also a mistake. Um, this also does no justice as it does not present an accurate reading of the paper and may encourage overcorrection, which is ultimately harmful. Finally, 
an easy trap to fall into is reading into the paper and interpreting what the writer possibly intends. This is dangerous, right? The fact is we don't know what the writer's intentions are. And this is the purpose of the peer review is to show the writer that they haven't pulled it out of their head and put it on the paper, right? And a successful academic paper must deliberately, directly, and clearly lay out all its logic. Uh, that means all its claims, reasons, evidence, warrants, and choices must be put down in writing, not in the writer's head, not, not based off of their intentions or what they hope. It has to be in the writing because that's all we have um, when we're reading it. If the reader has to guess the meaning and or intention of any part, then the paper is not explicit and clear enough. So if you're reading it and you're like, I don't see it, you need to make a note so that they put it in. Mm -hmm. Sam and I now want to share what a peer review session might look like in terms of sequence and time. The following sequence is a 90 minute peer revision activity. 90 minutes is a long time to work with one paper, especially if you are new to this process. Consider taking on these chunks of time one by one and make sure you take breaks while reviewing. If you get bored or if you're unable to pay attention, you will not be able to dedicate your efforts effectively and give your peer the best feedback possible. Okay, let's review the steps. First, you need to trade papers with a peer through an online word processor. And you guys need to ultimately decide what that word processor would be. So it could be something like Google Docs, like in Google Drive, or it could be Office 365. You then need to establish with one another how you would like to receive feedback. So do you prefer comments? Do you prefer a, a below or above paragraph annotation? Or perhaps you like line inserts. So let me clarify what these are. Comments would be uh, highlighting a section of text, inserting a comment, and that comment populates typically on the right-hand side of the page. Below or above paragraph annotations mean that your peer is actually providing annotations directly into the paper, but above or below the paragraph that is problematic. Um, and then line inserts, that means that the, the peer is actually putting the correction, or not the correction, but the annotation straight into the line where the, the error might be or where something's missing. Um, personally, I like the comments feature because I know when I can uh, kind of like dismiss them after I've corrected them. And I also don't accidentally miss them before submitting a paper, right? So if you miss one of your below or above paragraph annotations or line inserts, it might ultimately end up in your academic paper that you submit, which would look like an error once it's read at the reading. Um, but again, these work for you, um, or if you have another system, either way, just make sure you are clear about what you want from your peer, and then make sure that you are clear about what they want from you before moving forward. All right, take at least 20 minutes to read the text from top to bottom. Now, you all are undoubtedly clever because you're in AP Capstone, but here's the thing, reading quickly does not do anyone justice in this process. So speed reading, just to say that you read it in under 10 minutes is not the way to approach this. Slow down and read carefully, read really closely and make sure that you understand everything that's occurring in that paper before you move forward. Then address each element for at least 10 minutes through careful analysis of your peers paper and thoughtful annotations. So what we're asking you to do is to take all of the questions we just went over and apply those and take 10 minutes for each of the concepts that we discussed right so topic of inquiry introduction and, and literature review and so on slow down 10 minutes for each of those. Remember, if you get tired, take a break. If you become disengaged, take a break. Stand up, walk around, go outside, do something in order to refresh your brain. Then take at least 10 minutes to write a note to your peer to describe the overall impressions of the paper. So think about how your holistic perspective of this paper really is starting to show up. You want to think about trends that you see throughout the paper. So it might be errors in communication, or maybe there's a word that's used too frequently, or maybe there are definitions that are outside of, of what you understand, right, as a non-specific subject scholar. Make sure you applaud what they did well. But like Sam said before, don't be 
overly nice. Be respectful, right? This person is your colleague, your research colleague. So be respectful of, of their good effort as well. And then provide ideas about how to improve. Again, these are holistic. So you could say something like, um, I'm not quite sure in the method if I could replicate this maybe you need to add, right? And you're not doing the work for them, but you might say you need to add um, clarification about your instruments or you need to add a specific step that I'm missing, right? So you're going to clarify these things as you move forward. And so that's the whole, that's the whole process. Again, it's 90 minutes at best. It's gonna take you a while. So be patient. Um, hopefully you can kind of do this throughout the year as well, instead of just one giant chunk of time, but make sure that, that you take some time to be very deliberate and to support your peer. Thanks, Emily. Let's recap. In this lesson, we learned about peer reviewing. We learned that a peer review is a process designed to help a writer develop their work's validity through feedback. The purposes of a peer review are to help a writer reflect about their work by asking questions about it like the audience would help you as a writer develop a sense for the rubric and paper from the perspective of your audience. Ask rubric-based questions about each element of the paper you're reviewing. Avoid common mistakes like correcting and making decisions for the writer, being too nice or too harsh, guessing what the writer means, and lastly, most importantly, not referring back to the rubric. We know that not all students have access to the internet or a device. We're working on solutions to help students get what they need to show their best work. If you need mobile tools or connectivity or know someone who does, you can reach us out to us directly to let us know. And that's it for this review session on engaging in virtual peer reviews. Thank you for watching and keep coming back to check for more lessons. Thanks.